hello to everyone in Brazil right now who's watching. I had such a great time with you at the Send a, a few months ago, and I'm honored to be able to speak to you guys again, especially during this time when the world is so crazy. And I don't know about you, but I have never appreciated and loved being a follower of Jesus Christ more than right now. Just to know that I can be secure in Him. Just to know that He really did conquer the grave, so I'm not afraid of death. doesn't mean I just go out and do stupid things, but I'm, I'm just not fearful. I mean, how many times in Scripture does He tell His disciples, Fear not. Man, that's the most oft-repeated command. We are to be those people like he describes in the book of Luke when he says when, when all these things are happening in the end, he says straighten up and lift up your heads because your redemption is near. Okay, that's got to be us right now. Fearless. I mean, we just celebrated Easter a few weeks ago and we thought about the resurrected Christ. And I don't know about you, but I thought about, what if I was there? Now seriously, picture yourself being there, and Jesus, after dying, comes to you. The, the terror of seeing someone after you saw him crucified, and now he's standing in front of you, and he says to you, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me, now go. Make disciples, and I'll be with you. I will be with you. You see how death wasn't going to hold me back. I just think about if Jesus told me to follow him in making disciples, man, I would just go anywhere with him at that moment. Because I would think to myself, this guy had power over demons. I saw him raised, paralyzed, blind, walk on water, and now... He rose from the dead and tells me that he's been given all authority and he's telling me to follow him into making disciples. I would just go. What could you possibly be afraid of if you were standing next to the resurrected Son of God? And that's where you look at a virus or you look at a recession and you go, this doesn't affect me because he promised me that if I follow him, I trust him, I believe him, I will never die. I've been given eternal life. And not only that, but his promise to us as his church is he says, look, upon this rock, I will build my church. I'm going to build it. And the gates of hell can't stop this. So we're supposed to be this unstoppable force going into the world now, now, and not to shrink with fear like everyone else. This is not the church. The church is supposed to be so powerful and unafraid. And, and, and that even if they get rid of all of our buildings and we can't afford a building, that doesn't kill the church, not the true church. And, and, and those of us who are shepherds, if we lose our salaries, lose our jobs, that doesn't stop us from shepherding. Not true shepherds. You know, we'll find another job, but we're going to keep leading our people and equipping the people into the things of God, and His church will move forward. Because remember, we are the body of Christ. Literally, the body. Are you telling the resurrected Christ that His body is destructible? That, that we can actually destroy Him? It, it's, it's like if I if I had a diamond right here and I and I hit it with a hammer, what would happen to the diamond? Nothing. But if the diamond shatters, it proves that it wasn't real. And God told us, look, there's going to come a time when I will test. He says one man will build his house on a rock and the other will build it in the sand. And the storm's going to come. One will get wiped out, but those of us who built on the rock, he says, you're not going anywhere. You'll stand the test. In fact, it's a good thing. In John 15, he describes, he goes, look, 
I'm the vine, Jesus says, and my Father is the vine dresser. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while the ones who are fruitful, he trims clean so they'll be even more fruitful. Man, I believe we're in a time when the, the vine dresser is, is chopping off branches that he says are unfruitful. And if any of you have ever pruned a tree, you have to do this. Get rid of the branches that don't bear fruit because it's sucking all the energy out of the ones that are bearing fruit. And he's trimming us clean right now. Man, I sure hope you are walking with such purity before God right now. Now is the time where you want him to prune you clean so you'll be even more fruitful. You know, right now, I'm, I'm living in Hong Kong, and it's, and it's crazy to me how careful some people are where they're wearing gloves and full masks and covering every ounce of their bodies. People carry around toothpicks, so when they have to touch the elevator button, they'll, 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 they'll push it with a toothpick and then throw it away. So there's just no chance. And the other day, I saw a man just walking like this just to make sure no one gets within arm's length of him. And, and I'm just thinking, wow, they are so, so careful because they don't want even a chance of this virus touching them. You guys, this is the way we need to be about sin right now. Where we're just saying, God, I don't want anything evil in my life. I want to follow you right now. I don't want any fear. I don't want lust. I don't want the things of the world. I just want intimacy with you. And I want to follow you in this journey. Man, church, do not be afraid. We are in crazy times right now. But you and I were made for this. The Bible says God made us for this time. This is not a surprise to him. We're called to something. It's not going to be the same. Like everything we read about, this world will never be the same. But that's okay. As followers of Christ, we don't need every Sunday to look the same way. We're ready to follow our resurrected Christ anywhere. It's like this. It's like Jesus I, I picture him coming to me and saying, Francis, I want to take you on a journey right now. Okay? I don't, I'm not going to tell you where we're going, but I promise you it's places you've never been. I promise you to experience things that you've never experienced. Some will be more difficult and some will just bring so much life and excitement. He goes, and I promise you at the end of it, you and I, at the end of this journey, will be in paradise. Man, I would jump on that. I would leave anything and anyone for that. But too many people are saying, Ah, oh, Jesus, can, I don't really want to go anywhere with you. Can, I, can, can we just stay within? I'll, I'll follow you anywhere within three miles of my house. Can we just run laps? around my neighborhood so I can get back to what's familiar all the time. And others are saying, no, I got a better idea. I'm going to buy two treadmills. And why don't we just stay in my house and we'll just run side by side and talk and hang out. You guys, no, let's not be those types of people. Let's be excited that we live during this time. Man, now is the time to give. Now is not the time to hoard. Now is the time if Christ is coming back soon. We want to be found by him as having been sent out, believing in faith that I'm indestructible. He's promised me eternal life and I'm a part of his body that he protects and the gates of hell can't stand against us. Man, the Lord is raising up a new generation, a church that is resilient and truly on mission. Man, and I am so glad to be serving during this time. And I'm so glad to be able to call some of you when I saw your passion and your devotion, go, man, my brothers and sisters, let's finish this thing well and not let's not let any of the enemy's schemes or attacks intimidate us because the gates of hell cannot stand against us.
smile. I know you are doing hard work to make things possible. I want to let you know that I am with you, and I will be forever. Every little thing related to you make me smile. I know you are doing hard work to make things possible. Do it.